Hello everyone and welcome to this special stream which will be, uh, I believe, uh, published on both of our channel. I'm speaking today with Blithering Genius. He is a man with whom I have interacted in the past. He is a fierce critique of the revolutionary phenotype and it's always good year, years later to talk to him and see if he has changed his mind on some things and uh, if he can feel the revolutionary phenotype today. How are you doing, Blithering Genius? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. So, uh, how do you want to start this? Perhaps I should just make a general statement about what I think my book is, and then you can uh, say your views on it. Uh, yeah, that's fine. All right. So, uh, I wrote The Revolutionary Phenotype because I wanted to address a few questions uh, at the intersections of many massive questions of biology that didn't quite have a satisfactory answer in my view. Uh, looking at the product at the end, what do I believe this theory help us understand? Uh, it is a theory that helps us understand why certain pieces of the phenotype, and by phenotype I mean everything else than the genes, how can they become genes and under which circumstances and why is it so rare? And ultimately, why do they end up building up genetic code layers? Ultimately, the revolutionary phenotype is a theory of why genetic code layers exist as they are and why they don't go other ways, why we don't often have events in which some other things than the genes become genes. So ultimately, it's an explanation for the rarity and for the very specific circumstance in which these events happen, which are events ultimately that lead to the first replicator of a branch of living beings to start existing as a replicator. That is what the theory aims at, and along the way, I believe it provides good explanations for why memes shouldn't be considered uh, full-blown Darwinian replicators, why they end up always serving DNA, why things like human culture, religion end up being very pro-reproductive in general on the long term. So I believe that it addresses the questions ranging from the emergence of life, the addition of genetic code layers, and the phenomenon of embedded replicators like memes. So, I guess, what is your view on all of this, and how did you approach the revolutionary phenotype? Uh, well, I approached it as a critic, you could say. Uh, so, you know who Fathom is, right? Fathom was asking me to read your book, and... Uh, I said that I was pretty sure that it was, you know, wrong based on what I had heard. But if he wanted to come at me with the ideas, I would debunk them. And uh, we talked and I think I did that effectively. And uh, yeah, I think all the claims in the book, you know, that are substantive are incorrect. So I have a list of them. Uh, I went, I wrote a blog post on that. And I have a list of all the substantive claims in the book and the criticisms of them, if you want to go through that. Well, I mean, we've already done this because we did we have a conversation? I believe we did, right? Uh, back in the days? Mm -hmm. or, or was I just analyzing your discussion with Fadam? No, we had a discussion, but uh, we may not have gotten into every aspect of uh, the criticisms. We didn't cover everything. Uh, we yeah, covered but, some of the main points. Yeah, uh, uh, there's know, no well, shame just, in going back. List. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so phenotypic servitude. Uh, that's one concept you have in the book. And I reject that concept. I think it's misleading. It's, uh, it's, a, it's based on a false assumption that the phenotype is there to replicate the genotype. Your concept of a phenotypic revolution... You claim it's a new type of evolutionary process, and I would say it is just evolution, you know, I mean, it's on a special aspect of the phenotype, but it is not something revolutionary. <clears throat> I mean, it is not like a new kind of evolution. It is just that a certain aspect of the phenotype, in this case, the medium of inheritance, is selected to be something different than it was. And this creates a new type of being, and that new type of being is then more successful than the parent being or type of being 
but this is not something new, like it is not something outside of the theory of evolution. Uh, your concept of phenotypic forgetfulness is not entirely true, uh, especially if you define the, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold, especially if you define the, um, the, the phenotype as everything other than the genes, right? Not everything about an organism is encoded in genes. And this is not very important for multicellular life, but it is very important for uh, early forms of life. Uh, your concept of replicators all the way down, I think is wrong. The printer concept, I think is very misleading. Uh, your idea that printer genes are selfish, but other genes are not selfish. So your idea of a, a genotype within the genotype, I think that's also wrong. Uh, your idea that memetics are, <laughs> don't exist is completely wrong. Right? That, that memes don't evolve, they can evolve to be parasitic on humans. Uh, that is wrong. They can, just like bacteria can and viruses can, memes can. Uh, your notion of the relationship between biology and culture is very confused. Uh, the phrase genes print memes is absurd. Uh, the phenotypic separation theory of sex. Now, I didn't actually read that part very carefully. Mm -hmm. but it's a separate a theory. We can set that aside if you'd rather. But yeah, that did not I make mean, any sense to me. Okay. And, and then this idea that robots or AI will take over us and rule over us like kings or, or masters and we'll be the slaves to the robots. This is silly. This is science fiction. All right. Memes, so, memes have already taken us over, but the robots will never do it. The AI will <laughs> never do it. And we can explore the possibilities of what if we start storing all of our genetic information in computers and then printing it, printing zygotes. We could explore that possibility, but it does not lead to this uh, conclusion that you think it does. Okay, so those oh, are my criticisms. That's the list. Very interesting. And it's a pretty big now, list, I didn't obviously. take an extensive list of each point. So what I would like is we go back to the first point, and I'd like to address them one at a time and see what you have to say. Is that okay with you? Yeah, sure. So the first one was phenotypic servitude. Yeah, so the principle of phenotypic servitude which relies on my previous definition of the theory of natural selection. Let's see where you disagree. I read the theory of natural selection. Across generations, replicators occur within restricted environments and produce imperfect copies of themselves. Because the imperfect copies vary across the population, each set of replicators produces phenotypic machines that differ across the population as well. The replicator is able to create machines that favor their own replication, increase in number. The replicators that produce less efficient machines become less numerous. Accordingly, across generations, replicators are served by machines that are increasingly well suited to favor their copying. What do you do? You disagree with this statement? Uh, I think so. In a way, what do you define as a replicator? Anything that makes a copy of itself. Okay, so a human being is a replicator, right? The phenotype is a replicator. No, because by make copy of itself, what I mean is that the thing is read and written to <laughs> another copy. Okay, so when a, a human being has a child, is that not creating a copy of itself? No, because there's nothing that reads the human. There's something what that reads there's nothing its that DNA. reads the human. <laughs> okay, so uh, what happens in reproduction is you know, a, a zygote is produced, right? So you're defining replicator in a way that is specific to genes, which is part of an organism, right? Mm -hmm. There is a mechanism that copies genes, and genes are the medium of inheritance for most traits. So that is an important aspect of reproduction, especially for multicellular life forms. For single-celled life, it can be a little bit less important because an entire cell splits, right? Reproduction is not copying the genes of a cell. It is a cell splitting. I don't care. I, I'm not cells. defining the word reproduction. I'm defining the word replication. Well, you define the word replicate. So you're defining replicator as what then? Replicator is anything that can be 
read and written to another copy of itself. So uh, Shakespeare's works are a replicator? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, well, if, if you're uncomfortable with it, can, can you give me another name? Can we call well, them I mean, something uh, else? Jeans? I okay, mean, we can call jeans jeans. I mean, I uh, call them know. queens in the end in my book, so we can call them jeans, we can call them queens, but then you'll have to recognize, because you refuse well, to use the word replicator, that essentially Shakespeare no, I, I, I don't work refuse is a to use it. I don't refuse to use it. I just say, if you're going to talk about a replicator, let's talk about what replicates. Yeah. In the case and of a so what replicates organism, is what is being read and written to another copy of itself that can in turn be okay, read so and written. Okay, so every day, every day, most, many of your genes are read and written to other copies. Absolutely. But you are not reproducing unless you have a child. Yes. Right? So there, so there is, is so replication you, that happens within a generation and replication that happens across generations. Yeah, but reproduction refers to the phenotype creating a new phenotype. Yeah, but I, I haven't used the word reproduction in organisms. a single place in this paragraph, so I don't know what's your problem. You you want to talk about something else? I want to talk well, about well, my no, theory. No, 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 you're talking about phenotypic servitude. So you you want to create this master-slave relationship between the phenotype and no, the genes. Stop attributing right? intents to me. I, I was asking you if you agree with my theory of natural selection. You're telling me you disagree with some other words that are not in my paragraph. You, your paragraph had replicator. Yes, so I just asked you what the definition of it is, because if you're defining evolution in terms of genes, as opposed to the reproduction of the phenotype or the organism, that's where I would disagree, because I think reproduction is the creation of a new life form, and that selection operates on life forms, not on, it does operate on specific genes, but in most cases, the entire life form has to propagate. You have right? no disagreements with for... any single of my words in here, in other words. I will repeat, across generations, replicators occur within restricted environments and produce imperfect copies of themselves. Because the imperfect copies vary across the population, each set of replicators produces phenotypic machines that differ across the population as well. The replicators able to create machines that favor their own replication naturally increase in number. The replicators that produce less efficient machines become less numerous. Accordingly, right. across generations, replicators are served by machines that are increasingly well suited to favor their copying. You disagree yeah, with so nothing I've stated here. No, I do disagree with it. I disagree with the way you're using the word replicator and with this concept that the genes, you mean by replicator, you mean genes. And, and the I mean the family right? of the things that of, makes copies of themselves, including the genes. Point, the whole point of the phenotype concept is to distinguish it from the genotype, right? Yeah. And, and to identify the genotype as the medium of inheritance, whereas the phenotype is the, the form of the organism that does things in the world. And if that form leads to its own reproduction, then it will be selected for. Yes, now, which is what it, my statement states. No, because your statement says that you, you make this distinction uh, between replicators and phenotypic machines, which I disagree with, because my point is the phenotype is what replicates. And these phenotypic machines, as you call them, are not produced by the genotype. The problem DNA here is you're anything. trying to engage in a conversation with me where okay, you DNA don't DNA is an inert molecule, all right? It has you, to, pro, a protein complex copies DNA transcribes it, maps it to RNA, and maps the RNA to proteins, right? It's not, the, the, the genes are not the only thing that replicates, and the genes do not produce phenotypic machines. They are part of the phenotype. The thing They're is, you are trying to bring me on other definitions. I'm not interested in your alternative definitions, and if you don't like right, the well, words I just said, I, use... I disagree with your definition. No, you, you don't disagree, disagree with, with this definition. Though. That's the beautiful thing in what you're saying. To disagree with this definition, you have to redefine my words. You're not I accepting don't know what you're my definition. Because what I told you, what a replicator redefine? is, is something that gets read and written to some other copy of itself. Does the protein get read and written to something else? 
Uh, no, the the DNA no. gets read and written to another copy of the DNA. Okay, so can we have a word for this? Yeah, it's DNA or genes. That's what okay. genes means. It means the information content of the DNA molecule. So let's call them genes instead of replicators. Do you okay. agree if you change the word replicator in all of my paragraph that you agree with all statements? Instead of saying no, replicator, I, I already... you say genes. No, because as I said, the genes do not produce phenotypic machines. They don't do anything. They are simply information. The Let, protein give... complexes in a cell will, you know, a whole, a phenotypic machine creates new phenotypic machines, okay? A reproducing machine reproduces. I, I can give you a strand of, I can give you a, you know, a Petri dish with the entire human genome in it and say, oh, look at these genes. What are they going to do? Nothing. Are they going to copy themselves? Are they going to produce phenotypic machines to be their slaves? No. You're the one bringing all these subjects. Slaves, I've I'm not said up, this I'm here. bringing up biology. This no, is no, biology. No. This is how biology works. Let's go back to what you it's just not, said. It's, it is not a replic well, your concept of replicator, which is genes creating phenotypic machines. They you do not say, do that. You say genes do not produce phenotypic machines. That is, is correct. They do is not. the hemoglobin gene necessary? for the hemoglobin protein to appear yes, in is. the universe. Yes, it is. So is the protein That's what I call produce. Necessary okay, so for, for you, the emergence produce. of. Okay, so produce means encodes for, contains the information of. Yeah. It doesn't produce it. It contains the information necessary to create the hemoglobin protein. Okay, right? so now we change the word replicator for gene and produce for encode. Do we then right. agree with the statements in this paragraph? Do you uh, realize we've spent it, 20 is, fucking minutes yeah, this matters, just this redefining this words so it. that you could this, accept the truth no, because, right in front of no, you? No, just two words. No, this is bullshit, dude. You're full of shit. Okay? All you right, don't